four, three, two. From the vacuums of public access, uh, we are here. This is not a city council meeting. Thank God the next 30 to 60 minutes of your life are going to be so much more exciting than what's going on in the sewer systems of Torrance. We are what's in the sewer systems of Torrance, boys and girls. <laughs> Cap I'm uh, Wonder Boy. I'm here with Captain Greedy. And we are Crazy Way About Comics. <laughs> Back to the uh, down home episode of Comic Book Geeks. These guys are, are uh, left over here from the last show that was filming, the, the fishing and tackle show. Or, uh, <laughs> I love hangdog expression. <laughs> we'll talk about them later. We're here with Richard Starkings, creator of Elephant Men, Hip Flask, and other Elephant Men spinoffs. <laughs> How you doing, Richard? Good. Welcome Thank to you. the show. Good evening. How you doing tonight? I'm doing fine. Awesome. Uh, I'm just going to hold this up so they can kind of get an idea. There's, there's the Elephant Men project. Now, uh, I want to ask you a little bit about yourself, man. How do you, uh, what do you do? What do I do? Uh, I work in comics. Yes. Uh, I uh, moved to America after working for Marvel UK in London. What did you do for Marvel UK? I was, uh, I did everything at Marvel UK. I was a art assistant back in the days when everything was paced up repro cameras, you name it. Uh, then I was an editorial assistant, then I was an editor, then I was a group editor. We put out some fabulously well-forgotten books like Dragon's Claws, Death's Head, and the Sleaze Brothers. The bl like the Blues Brothers, but uh, sleazy. No relation er. whatsoever. So there was, there, was, there was just this wealth of talent in uh, Britain at the time. And without that, that sort of... Uh, immense pool of talent. You wouldn't have had people like Grant Morrison, Garth Ennis, um, Carlos Esquerra was one of the original artists on, on 2080. Why are British people more talented than Americans? I didn't say that. <laughs> That's what you're insinuating by <laughs> saying names like Alan Moore and Grant Morrison. No, you're inferring it. <laughs> no, um, but seriously, why do you think that is? I don't think that um, uh, Americans are, are less talented than British creators, but I think that the intensity with which British creators had to work on five-page stories. You have to put a lot more in. It has to be a denser story, and you have to edit yourself. You have to take out anything unnecessary. Whereas, you know, the 22-page format in America means you can you can have some flimflam in there, but writing five-page stories every week. But they do things that were more mature than we were doing at yeah, the time. Yeah, but I think because of because there was severe restriction. Um, British creators pushed against it more. And maybe, you know, American comics just sort of took for granted a lot of the freedoms that you had. Hmm. Um, whereas British creators, you know, Garth Ennis just wanted to get the word cunt into an American comic, and he finally succeeded. 
got Grant Morrison wants to get the word fuck in an American comic, and he finally succeeded. So Your lives these, are complete. These are the goals that British creators have for American comics. Wow. That's why. Lofty. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Well, enough about those hacks. What about you, man? So, I mean, let's, let's talk about Elephant Man. We really, I don't, what's it about? Uh, Elephant Man are human-animal hybrids. They've been bred to fight a war between Africa and China. Uh, a bloody, brutal war is fought, but ultimately the Elephant Men are defeated, rehabilitated, and now live out their lives amongst us. And there are 15,000 Elephant Men that survived the war that are spread throughout the world. And the series, the monthly series, focuses on about six or seven elephant men based in uh, Santa, Santa Monica. Monica. Yeah. So, what made you decide to do? A, is this called an anthropomorphic comic? Uh, actually, or? no. Oh, damn. No, because the well, human-animal hybrids, anthropomorphic characters, are animals that behave like humans, like Mickey Mouse or Donald Duck. But this is, an this is an elephant that behaves like a human. No, because they're human-animal hybrids, so they're part human, so they're not anthropomorphic because they already have human qualities. What's the, sign, what's the nomenclature then? What's the proper nom nomenclature? They're called elephant men. Ele it's and on the cover of the book, Mike. Y oh, yeah. And I have a question <laughs> about that. How come elephant men when there's also hippo men and alligator men and all sorts of different kinds uh, of men? Because elephant men is regarded as a derogatory term in the elephant men universe. Oh, okay. So, so it's like a slanderous term that covers them all. Wow. Okay, I got it. And so some are really alligator men that they call elephant men. Yeah. That's the they, derogatory term. They had the them. Howard Stern show. <coughs> yeah. This episode that you did, I like that. And Why'd you use Howard Stern? The looked like an alligator. And they called him an elephant man. And I was, it was the first one I read, actually. I was saying, that doesn't make sense. And he talked about the E word. Uh, yeah. yeah. So uh, Howard Stern is not in the book, but Herman Strum, who may or may not bear a resemblance to Howard Stern, is in the book. Um, when I lived uh, in New York, I, s I slept on the sofa with my friend Greg Wright, who actually is the colorist on the book now, 21 years later. And um, his alarm, his radio alarm, used to wake us up with Howard Stern. And I would still be sleeping, and I would carry that Howard Stern uh, interview technique in my head all day. So that, that never really left me. Hmm. And that's why I put him in the book, was because I just c I had to get that out of my head. And I, and I think he's a very easy character to, not parody, but to um, homage in a way, because it's, it, you can't parody somebody who, who is that over the top. I, I always like the issues of Cerebus, where he put like Keith uh, Richards and Mick Jagger as characters in the book, or Alan Moore is in the book, or, you know, I think when you put a character in the book, in a, in a fantastical situation, the character will react differently. And, and there's a lot of English sitcom characters, actually, in Elephant Man that I sort of sneak in in supporting roles. Because it's easy to write for voices that you can already hear in your head. And personally, I feel that what I enjoyed as a reader was following one series for an for a extended period of time. Well, how well are these doing? How, how well are they selling? The first issue of Hip Flask has actually sold like over 40,000 in one wow. form. Wow. That's Good. really good. My comic book sold 365 issues when I put it out. 365 issues? I know. I'd make he five, bought one a day for five, a year. <laughs> I made 5,000 of them. <laughs> I, I sold a lot of them around. Well, so may, you make most of your money from lettering, um, which you're like the premier letter Actually, in we make most, according to Mike. Sorry. most of the money is made selling comic book fonts, which is then invested into making the comic book. Comic book what? Fonts. F-O-N-T-S. You know what a font is? No, I don't want to. Tell, tell the layman. A font is a what typeface. A what a font based is. Based on comic books. You know what a typeface is? So you sell it to people who are making their own comic books, and yeah. they do it. Yeah. So or, did you create digital lettering? Were you the inventor of it? No, I was the main proponent of it. The first digital lettering I came across was by David Cody Weiss on a shadow graphic novel back in the early 90s. Mm -hmm. And I just thought, well, that's the way it's going to go. And uh, you know, I, I, I thought that pen lettering would be Pen letters would put out of business, and I thought I'd rather be the person that put myself out of business. Because you were a hand letterer, right? Uh, I've always used my hands. Yes. I was a pen letterer, and now I'm a digital letterer. Gotcha. But, uh, you know, the, the, uh, anybody that says there's a difference between using your hand with a pen and using a mouse or a keyboard or a Wacom tablet, it's the same thing. You have to be a skilled craftsman to use either. Hmm. So but Mike, Mike shows how it's really an artistic kind of endeavor. Like, 
you had the, the car and it was screeching around a corner and then they would, the word screech went around like this, like the right. car was going. And there's a lot of really exciting stuff that I really, I hadn't noticed before. I told, I told, you shouldn't yeah. notice it too much. I mean, Danger Girl is, a, is an example of a book where, um, you know, just, just Scott Campbell's got a really great grasp of not only uh, comic book art, but you feel like you're watching a cartoon at the same time. So um, he really thinks about the way lettering is in integrated into the artwork. And the best it's artists to work with are the ones who have a very specific idea in mind for lettering. Tim Sale, very, very specific about what he wants for lettering. Jeff Campbell, Kurt Busiek, Jeff Loeb. So do you get a lot of direction then when you letter? Yeah, and it's like any art form that's also a craft. You need direction. If you don't get direction, for all you know, the person drawing or writing the book doesn't like what you're doing. But if you actually have a conversation, that's, I think, the most important thing with any letterer or colorist is to talk to the artist and the writer and develop a relationship with them so that you know what they like and what they don't like. And then you're part of a team. And not just yell at them? We will be right, right back. back. And when we come back, you're going to get this times 10 in your ear hole. Stick around. It's Jeffrey's Comics, the coolest and longest running comic store in the South Bay. We have the best selection of graphic novels in all of Southern California. We've got action figures priced as low as $2.95. We have an amazing selection of old and rare comics for the collector, and comics as low as 20 cents each. Buying Jeffrey's comic books will make you stronger than Superman, brainier than Batman, and greener than Green Lantern. And remember, Jeffrey's Comics is happy to buy your old comics as well. Jeffrey, lean. You're you're on camera here. Yeah, I guess. This is better than winning an Eisner, dude. Being on this show. I know. Yeah. You need. <laughs> you have? Yeah. For what? Marvels. Yeah. Yeah. Focus. Who me? Yeah. Focus on the show. You mean? Yeah. Are you talking about the camera? You're back from commercial. Oh, right now? Yeah. Are are, are we rolling? Yeah. Focus, people. Mike, yeah. Where? Oh, focus, people. Fresh from their uh, USO tour of Afghanistan, we got the musical stylings of Hang Dog Expression. Hit it, boys. Yes. Yeah. 
Special ladies and gentlemen, thank you. Thank you so much for stopping by. We're going to be right back after this break with Richard Starkins. Recognize. Was it good? Uh, was it the best one yet. Yeah. Of the two. <laughs> It's Jeffrey's Comics, the coolest and longest running comic store in the South Bay. We have the best selection of graphic novels in all of Southern California. We've got action figures priced as low as $2.95. We have an amazing selection of old and rare comics for the collector, and comics as low as 20 cents each. Buying Jeffrey's comic books will make you stronger than Superman, brainier than Batman, and greener than Green Lantern. And remember, Jeffrey's Comics is happy to buy your old comics as well. Children of Mapo are created for one single purpose, the destruction of the enemy. We have been trained to kill since we were old enough to stand. But you, you have forged yourself into a weapon of war in less than a year. You have killed more of my kind than I've killed humans. You are a much deadlier terrorist than Mapo could ever have imagined. How did you become so much like us in so short a time? I'm not like you. I'm not a terrorist. You invaded my country. You killed my friends and family. You left me nothing but hatred. Say something, dude. You haven't said shit tonight. Richard Starkings. It's, <laughs> oh, you it's just, your, <laughs> your friend? I don't know. You just threw a tan on and said, I'm coming. I'm going to go down to the studio. Uh, spray on tan. Spray it on. You couldn't even sit out in the sun to get it. You just sprayed it on. I don't have time. All right. I'm a, I love I'm your a hair. man. I like your hair. Uh, <laughs> I love you. I'll coach you. You like that? I'll tickle you. Um, <laughs> hi, Richard. <laughs> So, uh, word on the street is that we're going to see a cinematic adventure of the Elephant Men. That's true. Directed by David Lynch? Uh, no, that's the other one. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, uh, so look, tell us. like option? Like hip it's been optioned. Like Elephant Men. How about hip flask? Same thing. Same They're all option? part of the same <clears throat> universe. How much money did you get paid for those things? Uh, it was a four figure sum. So was, is there, is there a thousand. decimal in the middle anyway? <laughs> <laughs> One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I spent eight. it at the comic bug last week. The whole thing? So, awesome. Oh, hey, right. you're not supposed to say comic <laughs> bug on this show. That this is a, but the, the comic was discovered at comic bug by film producers. That's right. Nice. Yeah, uh, it, was, it was discovered at the, at the, the other comic. Thanks to Daniel. Thing. Thanks to Daniel. No, no thanks to me. Oh, wow. Yeah. Nice. Well, thank you for having me still. Have and having, having the meet for on having Sunday. Daniel. And for hiring Daniel. Yeah. Wow. And uh, yeah, so dreams do come true. How's, how's that all coming along? Uh, I had a meeting this afternoon with uh, the producer, Janet Zucker. Mm -hmm. uh, what, are, what are some other films she's produced? Fair Game comes out this November. Sean That's Penn. the Valerie Plame thing, right? The Valerie Plame incident, um, uh, Sean Penn and Naomi Watts. She's right gorgeous. Now. She related to Zucker's that did Airplane? Yes, yeah, Jerry is her husband, yeah. 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 Who he directed Ghost. And uh, one of the writers on. Some do you ever go do pottery over at their house or anything? <laughs> I was at their house today. Doing pottery? Uh, writing the treatment. <laughs> oh, well, they like they like that joke. <laughs> <laughs> Unless they're laughing at us, I don't know. Well, that's cool. So everything's moving smoothly. Yes, they are. And it got a director or anything? Or no, it hasn't because there's no story and they don't want to approach a studio without a screenplay. So. What do you mean there's no story? There's I, a, I haven't written Look how the, thick this is. It's, it's a big story, yeah. yeah. But, the, but a movie, the, the nature of a movie and the nature of an ongoing comic book series are completely different. With a comic book series, you have to keep the story moving along. You have to have several different stories at the same time so that 
to have that continuity, and a movie has to be that three-act structure, self-contained character arc. So there's a blockbuster tentpole movie. Uh, that's cool, man. Congratulations. And, uh, and that obviously wasn't your intent when you created the comic. You didn't want it to be a movie or anything. You just... What I wouldn't was, what, say, what I, wouldn't was say I didn't want it, but you know, I love comics. You know, you and I are alike in that. We, we love comics and we want to make comics. And I think uh, creating Hip Flask and Elephant Men was my way of having uh, a place where I could write the kind of stories that I wanted to read. Where can people get Elephant Men? Uh, at the local comic book store, for instance, Jeffrey's Comics. Oh, that, was, that was like, that was rehearsed. <laughs> that was good. Um, any local comic book store, you can get them from, you can get the collections from Amazon. Um, Amazon? What, what is Amazon, that? Amazon, it's an online bookstore, <laughs> but I always <laughs> say go to your local comic book store first. Yes. Um, you can also get them digitally through Comixology. Um, you can order back issues from our website, WonderCon, Emerald City Comic Con, Baltimore Comic Con. Any of those shows, I tend to be at regularly. You are tireless. You go to like every convention. I don't sleep. I think, yeah. And, uh, it's true. You have to get out there to s sell your book. You yes. really, in this market, in this economy, if you're not out there putting the book in people's hands, nobody else will do it for you. How many, how many books are in previews a month? 900? I would say maybe 1,500. Yeah. yeah. Thousands. And, uh, yeah, I mean, you're great. You do a great job at Comic-Con. You, you actually build a table out of, out of these, these are bricks. That yeah, we 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 pile up the books tables. in the corner of the booth, and then you're on pedicabs. You're everywhere, dude. You just can't get away from the elephant man. You've tried. I've tried. You can't <laughs> can't escape it. Can't escape. You know, it's like the truth. You can't escape it. Kind of good truth. <laughs> cool. Um, and what's your website? Hipflask.com is the elephant man website. Comicbookfonts.com for all your comic book fonts needs. Comicraft.com if you want to hire us to letter your comic book. What? what? Jeffrey, anything you want to add? If somebody wanted to write to the show, what would they do? Well, yeah, what would they do? <laughs> if somebody, oh, <laughs> yes, I, there is something I'd like to write. If you would like to write to the show and uh, give your opinions and uh, etc., the comic book geeks at gmail.com. That's the comic book geeks. T H E, like it says on the bottom of your screen. If we write a funny letter, we'll read it. No exclamation marks in yeah. the dot com address. And then you get like you get five hundred dollars in free merchandise at Jeffrey's Comics if uh, <laughs> you write in anything you want. Right? The Comic Book Geeks <laughs> at Gmail dot com. Take care of it. That's a line. You know, <laughs> nobody's gonna watch this far in the show. We're safe. <laughs> People have turned the channel. Yes, Jeffrey's tired. Captain Greedy. He's, uh, you saw, you read, I don't know if you guys read Dark Knight Returns. This is Dark Knight Needs to Go Back to Bed. <laughs> <laughs> right here. So we're going to have Hangdog play us out tonight with a little ditty they like to call. Smoke marijuana and...
great, guys. Right. Great. <laughs> All right, we'll be back next month for another exciting episode. Comic Book Geeks, play us out, boys. Uh, hound dog or something. <laughs> everybody. wired on Wednesday nights too because it's new comic day. Tomorrow's new comic day. I know. A Jedi shall not fear, nor hate, nor love. If you wish to join our ranks, you will follow a rocky path. A journey that many do not finish. Beware the dark side, it is seductive.